Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Card Review. So, I'm going to be talking about the card that everybody and their mother is talking about. Everybody's talking about it. Vexicus, Mega Capital G, Nim Nim, Mega Chaos, everybody, Sign the Sigma. Everybody has freaking talked about this card, and I am late to the party. Because I only do card reviews on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and not whenever. So, mine's late. I apologize. Oh well, let me give you my opinion about Stardust Warrior. So, as you guys know, uh, Synchro is getting a structure deck, which is totally fine. You know, it's coming out in the OCG, I believe, in January. So we won't be getting it till like maybe like March or April, but we'll still be getting it. Uh, but anyway, we have a uh, a Synchro structure deck, and in it, it's a new a Synchro monster, and its name is a Stardust Warrior. It kind of looks like if you would take Stardust Dragon and uh, Pyodramon Imperial Mode and just done them together. Because it, it, it doesn't look right. It looks really weird. And it, actually, it kind of just looks like you just took uh, Stardust Dragon, tried to make it more humanoid-like, and then just slapped his head on it. Um, uh, and what's up with his weird brown hands? Like, where, where did those brown hands come from? No, Stardust, there's nothing brown about Stardust. Brown is a little more of a soiled color. And I don't know, I don't know. I, I thought you would give him, like, bright white claws, not these dirty, dingy brown hands. But anyway, just look at the card art. Anyway, uh, Stardust Warrior. So it is a Wind Warrior Synchro Effect Monster that is level 10. 3,000 attack, 2,500 defense, so same exact stats as, um, Assault Mode. Dick Mode. <laughs> it is made with one Tuner Synchro Monster plus one or more non-Tuner Synchro Monsters. So, level 10 with materials, just like how you make a Shooting Star, same thing, you know. Well, at least this doesn't have to be sh uh, Stardust. Shooting Star does. This does not have to be, uh... Uh, Stardust Dragon, so you can take a Beals and summon a formula and just go, alright, Stardust Warrior. So, uh, let's go ahead and go into effect. I mean, it's, it's pretty difficult to get out, uh, unless you're, of course, running a very synchro-based deck, you know. Some decks are really great, you know, like Junk Doppel is really great, just busting out that level 8 and then just busting out that, uh, that, uh, formula synchron, you know, with, a uh, you know, with one for one and glow up bulb and unknown synchron and all that good stuff, you know, it might just be pops possible with popsicles to be able to, uh, pull this off. So, let's go ahead and read the fact and determine whether this is worth it or not. So, uh, it's a fact. During either player's turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster, monsters, so, stops inherent summons, apparently, you could tribute this card and negate this special summon and if you do destroy that monster during the end phase, if this card, if this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. Uh, so that's the first effect. So you know how Stardust Dragon, it's like, hey, you tried to destroy something. I'm going to go ahead and tribute myself and negate that and come back during the end phase. This guy does that for inherent special summons. Special summon monster. Monsters. So, um, Kleeput? No, Kleeput? You can go fuck yourself, because <laughs> Stardust Warrior, but then, of course, uh, as long as the effect wasn't negated, because it's just like, maybe... how does it, how does it work? Does he, does he activate on field and resolve in grave? How does that work? So, what would stop him? Is it skill drain that stops him, or so, because you tribute yourself, that's a cost, so you resolve in grave, so soul drain stops you, right? Yeah, soul drain would stop you, right? So, skill drain wouldn't stop you, because... You, res you tribute yourself, which is the cost, and you resolve in grave. I think that's correct. I think. Correct me in the comment section uh, if I am wrong, but I believe that's it. So I believe this can stop Kleeput. Well, it can stop Kleeput. The pendulum summoning of Kleeput, you can go, uh, Stardust Warrior, go ahead and tribute. If they don't have skill drain, because I'm not sure, but let's say, hypothetically speaking, they don't have skill drain, you can go ahead and go, alright, you want to pendulum summon those monsters? Alright, well, Stardust Warrior, go ahead and tribute yourself. All those monsters that you pendulum summon? Yeah, I know. I, wait, wait, I stop. I know that they are pendulum monsters, and then when they're destroyed, they go to the to the extra deck, right? Uh, no, you weren't summoned. You weren't summoned, so go to the graveyard. It's the same thing with Still Storm Roach. If you haven't picked up your Still Storm Roach, make sure you pick him up because he can't stop the pendulum summon of Kleeput. So, yeah. Anyway, so go ahead and just don't trip it yourself. Oh, bye, everybody, go away. No, nope, go bye. <laughs> so, uh, uh. Pretty, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, uh, 
I kind of feel I'm, I'm kind of up and down with it. His defense is definitely, definitely good. Being able to stop those all inherent special summons, you know, just like Steel Storm Roach, just like Thunder King Ryo, just like, uh, you know, Black Horn of Heaven, stopping those inherent special summons. So that's a pretty good effect. That, that's never bad. And you're 3,000 beater. You know, so one of the ways you would try to get around this card would be, of course, making like a cast style 101. But as soon as you would go into that XC, that's an inherent special summon. Nope. So, uh, good, good. The only problem is, is that you're gonna get fucked up by back row. So I'm hoping that you have a royal decree. And you know, and and synchro decks they generally run a lot of a lot of monsters, a lot of spells. So. You know, they're probably Royal Decree. So, Royal Decree plus this is very powerful. Very powerful. You know, you can still get fucked up by Dark Hole or Regeki, but, you know, just being able to eliminate those trap cards is nice, because the last thing you want to do is have this guy and then just go attack and, you know, like, de-prison. So, yeah. But let's go ahead and go over to his second effect, which might, you know, clear up some of the weaknesses with this guy. So, uh, second effect. If this card is destroyed by battle, so if somehow... Fucking miraculously, your opponent can summon a monster that's stronger than 3,000 without special summoning, inherently. You know, because it only stops inherent summons. And so, BLS, you can stop him. Judgment Dragon, you can stop him. Pendulum Summon, you can stop him. Non-inherent summons. Uh, uh, fuck it, Dragon Rulers, that's not inherent. Uh, Mermills, that's not inherent. Uh, High Priestess Puppy, that's not inherent. Inherent summons. So, uh, yeah. Um, Yubel. <laughs> Yubel is not inherent. So, yeah, so if I go activate Limit Reverse and you have this on the field, no. If I turn to Defense Effect to Summon Terror, no. You know, Terror Wipe You. Yeah, it, this card can only stop inherent summons. And Yubel, none of the Yubels are inherent. So, Ultimate. Yubel to Terror is not inherent. Terror to Ultimate is not inherent. So, those are all trigger effects from the previous form. So, yeah. So, uh, this guy can't stop you, Bell. That's funny. That's <laughs> funny. Um, anyway, let me get on track. I'm getting distracted. So, uh, this card is just a battle. If somehow, like I said, somehow you find a way to get over 3,000 without inherently so summon, good fucking luck. Or, if this phase of card, uh, leaves the field by an opponent's card effect and is still in your possession. Possession. That's the key word. Uh, so, you know, how I was saying about, you know, you getting fucked up by D-Prison and stuff. You attack, you get D-Prison, you left the field. It was by an opponent's card effect. It's still in your possession, as in one of your cards, as in still you still have it. You know, then you will go ahead and get this effect. So, you know, so um, you know, summon this. Got summon this. You get bottom list, which would suck so bad because you know probably one of the key play ways you would go into this would of course be like Stardust Dragon, which of course Stardust Dragon can negate bottom list. You go into this guy and he gets bottom list. Like ah oh, shit, but you know. It doesn't say. It doesn't even say sent to the graveyard. Just remove from the field. Just like Terra Incarnate, remove from the field. So as long as he doesn't get, no, even if he does get spun back to that deck, because he's still being in your possession, because it's in your extra deck and it can resolve in the extra deck. Correct? I believe so. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong on that again. No. Hmm. Yeah, because absolute zero, absolute zero. When if he goes back to extra deck, he still gets his effect. So yeah, when this guy goes back to extra deck, he would get still give his effect. And it's still in your position. So specifically, the situation that would not uh, happen was, of course, if your opponent, hypothetically speaking, they break through skill, you say so your effects negated. But can you still tribute yourself for cost? I guess you just can't activate your effect at all. Period. So your effect would be negated. Period. But uh, break through skill, you then go into. Um, not not Phoenix Chain, because Phoenix Chain you could still you can still activate your effect where it's a new tribute cost. Your effect's not negated. You, you, your activated effect. You just it's confusing. You get confusing. Break through scale, and then your opponent goes into like a one on one and then takes you and turns you into an extreme material. Not only are you extreme material which can't activate its effect anymore, but it's not in your possession anymore. So if they somehow pull out that break through skill and then one on one you, you will not get your effect. Which of course I haven't even done this effect. So when this happens, when he's destroyed battle, or it leaves the field by an opponent's card effect in your possession, you can special summon one level 8 or lower warrior warrior synchro monster from your extra deck. Warrior, the name, not warrior, the type. I swear to God, when I when when this card was revealed and you know, you know, and people were discussing it, and I was looking at the video, the comment section were just like, "Oh, I can summon Shien!" Like, no, you fucking can't. Not warrior type, warrior in your name. That's why the quotes are there. So, like, 
road warrior, a junk warrior. I don't know a nitro warrior. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not a synchro guy. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I got, I got so, I got some. So, uh, they actually, ch well, they, I wouldn't say they changed it. I wouldn't say that Raleigh that said kind of like they misinterpreted it because before it was special summon a w warrior synchro monster from your extra deck and uh, this special summon is true synchro summon. So before they changed it to level 8 or lower, this card was just completely just out the water broke because he could summon himself. Like 3,000 freaking beaners that stops and hands the summon. Then when he's removed from the field by an opponent, he summons him fucking self and just be like, all right. Um, I'm a 3,000 beater, attack, D prison, okay, effect, I'm gonna summon another one, attack, D prison again, okay, I'm gonna summon another one, attack, you know, but, uh, no, they changed it to level 8 or lower, which is still fine, it's not, it's not like end all, be all, holy shit, you know, but it's still a really good card, so, one of the ploys that you can do is you can summon Road Warrior. Road Warrior, it, of course, it says that it's counted Synchro Summon, so Road Warrior, you can go ahead and summon your Unknown Synchron. If you got a level 1, level 1 in your hand, you know, even a freaking, uh, a, what, a Battle Fader. Can you normal summon Battle Fader? I think you can. I think you can. Let me see. Oh my god, I have not looked at Battle Fader in such a long time. You know, you think you know the show effects until you actually look at the card. Let me see, Battle Fader. Yeah, you can normal summon it. So, you know, you, know, you could just normal summon it, synchro summon into formula, draw your card, and then take the Road Warrior and the formula synchro and go right back into this guy, another one. So, uh, you know, it's not the end all be all. It's not like, you know, it's completely, if he, this guy gets shut down, he's completely shut down because it doesn't take, after you get him out, it's not much to just get him out again depending on what you have in your hand. So, not too shabby, not too shabby. So, uh, yeah, uh, overall he's pretty good. Um, his effort takes a little bit of work, but you know I'd say he's definitely worth it. Uh, I kind of wish that you know uh, uh, I, uh, assault mode never existed because assault mode's effect could have been this guy. This guy should have been assault mode, you know. Because still, even to right now, I'm still like assault mode's not only easier to bring bring out, but it's better, you know? This guy can only stop in Heron Special Summon. I can Assault Mode because negate spell, trap, or monster effect. So, you know, sure, I can't stop the summoning of the 101, but if that 101 tries to take my Assault Mode, I can negate it. So, I know. Uh, I just feel like Assault Mode is better and easier to get out, you know? Bring out a Stardust. Uh, you got your freaking uh, Assault Beast. You got, he's a Beast Warrior, so you got Triple Tanky. You just, it, it's... I'd say assault mode's much better than this guy. He's much easier to bring out, and same stats and better effects, spell trap and monster effect. This guy just inherent special summon. So if it ain't inherent special summon, he's not negating it. So, but he's still a good card. I'm not saying that he's bad. So go ahead and tell me what you guys think about um, Starter Warrior. Really interesting. Next uh, card review, of course, on Thursday we'll be talking about the new Synchro Tuner Monster, or Tuner Synchro Monster, that is also in the structure deck, going over him and determining whether uh, he should be ran uh, in place of Formula Synchron, with Formula Synchron, what's up with that. So I'm going to go ahead and be doing that. So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed. And like I said, if I missed anything or if I got anything incorrect, please, please correct me in the comment section below, because, you know, usually you guys aren't you know, too afraid to... Uh, tell me to shut the fuck up and that I'm an idiot. Some some of you. Some of you. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope that you guys enjoy and just voice in my opinion. Like I said, I'm giving my opinion. I'm giving my two cents. If you don't want my two cents, then don't watch the video. Alright, so thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And yeah, I will see you guys on Thursday. Thanks for watching.